All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our finale for STEM Week. We are excited to bring you this webinar tonight on Full Steam Ahead, how amusement park engineers made their dreams a reality. We're happy to have Angel and Lee here with over 30 years of combined work in the museum, uh, in the amusement park industry. Lee Wilson and Angel Price continue to encourage those interested in STEAM related industries. Between each of them, they have experience in both robotics, controls programming, leading technical trades, and mechanical assembly. Their journey toward their dream job was not an easy one, but they want to share some of those stories and go over some fun lessons with the hope of inspiring the future. So get ready and buckle up for their presentation and let's go full steam ahead. All right. Thank you, Sarah. That's so great. Um, welcome to the Steam Factory. My name is Lee, and um, today we're going to be talking to you about our adventures in uh, working in an amusement park industry. So um, I think we want to start with telling you a little bit about ourselves. So um, like I said, my name is Lee Wilson. Um, I'm a, My studies are in mechanical engineering. I've worked in the um, amusement park industry for about 25 years. It's a long time. All right. Um, my motivation for working in the amusement park industry is because I loved ro roller coasters. Loved them. Loved roller coasters ever since I was young. And I love making things that like, you know, roller coasters and rides and things like that that make people happy. So um, that's a really important thing for me. The other thing is I like um, going out to the community and teaching specifically like robotics and science. So that's why we want to talk to you a little bit about our nonprofit er um, area, which is the STEAM Squad. Um, that is the effort that we're doing to talk a little bit about math and science and try to teach as many people as possible about math and science and showing them that it's fun. And really specifically sharing that information to underrepresented um, areas of the community. We wanna make sure that everybody's learning about technology so that they can all have those resources. So one of the things that's really important to me, like I said, is my favorite quote, is work smarter, not harder. So one of the things that we really wanna talk about is just really trying to be smart with achieving our goals. And even if you're not interested in the amusement park industry, we want to make sure that you guys are working for your passions and working smart for your passions. So um, I'm going to introduce my friend, Angel. Angel, you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Hey, everybody. My name is Angel. Um, I have around 12 years or more um, in the amusement park industry. Um, my motivation happens to be just improving things through the world of science and technology. Um, also agree with Lee. I, you know, I like working in an industry that makes people smile, that makes them happy, that makes them forget, you know, right. their troubles for a little while. Um, so that gives me passion to do what I do. And my favorite quote happens to be education should not only teach work, it should teach life because I also believe that whatever you do for work, you should also enjoy doing it in life. So that's another reason why happy to be here. Hope you all are happy to be here too, because we're excited about STEAM. If you're not sure what that is, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math that's all right. put together. <laughs> but you know what, before we go too deep into, you know, the amusement park industry and how we got into it and what makes it fun, we got to talk a little bit about the STEM industry. I mean, so do you think we should take a closer look? That's right. I, I think we should be a little bit educated on what's happening in the um, STEAM industry. All right. So here we go. Fun fact. So this came from census.gov, January 26, 2021. So this is recent. But gender roles in STEM. Did you know that women make up nearly half of the workforce currently? However... Only 27% of those are STEM workers are women. Wow. Did you know that, Lee? I did not know that. I know. Now, granted, it's growing steadily each year, especially with efforts similar to the week that you got to experience at the school. But we're trying to get the word out there just so that more people have access to, you know, STEM industries, whether it's being mechanical engineer or nurses or doctors, but just science industries in the, in, to begin with. So something else too that I thought was pretty interesting, especially for myself. So my background is in mechanical engineering. And um, this also came out of Pew Research Center for this year too. And it was black and Hispanic workers remain underrepresented in the STEM workforce. So if you look at this chart here, the one thing that stands out, because both Lee and I are in engineering, is if you look at African-Americans, roughly 5%, and that's either amongst health-related, life science, math, physical science, computer, and then there's engineering, and that's the 5%. But if you look at Hispanic, it's 9%, 
Asian, 13%, other, 2%, and then white, 71%. And when I saw this graph the first time, um, I thought that is very similar to what my classrooms looked like when I went through engineering school. Um, majority of people in my class did not look like me. Um, and that's kind of where, you know, the representation matters. A lot of people don't know that it's a possibility to be in this industry or to have an engineering role or to be a leader of trades um, because they don't actually see themselves. Now, Angel, I think it's really important that um, we let people know that, you know, the reason why we have the steam squad show and things like that is to let people know that science and technology is for everybody. And we want to just make sure that everybody knows that there's an opportunity for you in those industries. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, we want to make sure everybody has access to it, regardless of your background. That's and right. that's another reason why we liked talking about it here today. So another one too, just so that we can set the environment and demographic. So Poor education and lack of encouragement are major reasons why African-Americans and Hispanics are underrepresented in STEM fields. And you may say, well, why? Well, one of them is less likely to think they can succeed in those fields. And that's where the representation matters piece comes in. And then others are just less interested in STEM fields than others. I, I don't know about you all, but I, I think my job is pretty cool. I get to work on rides that people from all over the world get to go and experience. And, and it's not just rides. I was, I was able to work on areas and new lands that were built, um, but then also I get to experience them too. And I, I love the fact that it mixes, you know, a lot of different perspectives and different disciplines amongst the STEM industry to bring something together that is just beautiful. So you may be saying to yourself, well, man, I really want to get into the STEM industry. I don't know what I want to do, but what can I do today? Well, I, think the, I think the important thing is to, to talk about it is um, learning about things early as possible. You can start right now. I mean, that's the really important thing. We want to make sure that that everyone knows that you don't have to wait for a college or things like that to start that, especially if you're talking about the amusement park industry, there's so many things that you can do right now. If you're interested in roller coasters, there's some great simulation programs that you can learn how to build your own roller coasters. If you're interested in robotics, you can start building robots now. If you're interested in like animatronic or animated figures, you can start building animatronics and animated figures right now. I mean, if you want to build video games, I, I love video games. It's you can kind of see I have a video game thing right behind me. But, you know, um, if you want to build video games, you can start building your own video games right now. And I mean, those are things you can start right now. So it's really important to know that you can do those things right now. And don't be intimidated by, you know, oh, that's what older people do. No, you can do that stuff right now. And then by the time you are in a, a, a place where you can, you know, looking for a job and things like that, you can say, I've already built these kind of things. And, and that'll make you look even better in those in the industry, especially in the amusement park industry. Now, now, is there is, is something uh, as far as like, you know, what do they need to do if they're having trouble getting those kind of, in, um, you know, getting those answers? You know, that's a very good question. So something else to um, let's say you're trying to get in the amusement park industry, similar to the two of us, what we did um, is being OK with asking for help. And that's right. help in so many different areas. I mean, if you are in middle school and you are struggling with your math class, you know, talking to other students that um, also may be better at it than you are and trying to get help or tutoring or talking to your, your teacher or even I will say. So back in my day, we did not have YouTube to show you a lot of these lessons. And I mean, YouTube is like one of the best libraries that you can have to pull up videos and do research on to find out how, how are these things done? That is very true. So every step gets you closer to your goal. Do you wanna talk about interest and in education? Of course. So one of the things, especially when we're talking about the amusement park industry, is being educated on the industry. So um, one of the things that you really want to do is just really try to do as much research as possible in those in the industry, not just your favorite theme park, but also the companies that help build those um, theme parks, you know, and also just making sure that you just do as much research about it before you go um, and, and talk to these companies as possible, because they like hearing that you that you know about their company. They like knowing that you know that information. So that is something really important. Now, is there anything else? What's the next step on? on um... So the next one is it's okay to experience failure. 
I know I said it. I'm going to say it one more time. It is okay to experience failure because when you get into um, a career or even going through your education, something as complex as engineering or anything within the STEM field, you're going to have those moments where things aren't going to work out. You know, there's going to be those moments where, you know, the class that first time around, you just didn't get it. And then you need a second time around to just try to get it. It is okay. I think most of us who are very happy and successful in our careers, we failed many, many a times. But the whole point is that you learn from that failure um, so that you don't make that mistake again, or you learn where you need to grow because you got to be able to identify where, where you need help. And, and that's when you go through those learning curves of failure. Now, the other part about the next step is to know your passion. Right. So it really is important to know, especially when we when we talk about the amusement park industry, it is a big company. Right. So um, it is not just engineers. It is not just artists. It is business people. It's writers. It's all those kind of things. You really want to know what is your passion? What is the thing that you really enjoy doing? Because number one, you're going to be doing it a whole lot. Right. So number two is also just important that it, you're using the skills that are really um, that you, that you can do very well. Right. So it is important to know what you're passionate about because that is be that'll be the thing that helps you progress in in the in this industry so that you can do the things that you want to do so lee what's your passion since you're talking passion well i love everything i <laughs> really but i mean as you can see i love video games and i love roller coasters i love drawing and i love creating stories and things like that so on the creative side that's something that's really important to me um as i've been i've been doing this for 25 years now i've learned that i've like uh, i like a lot of things but the important part is really the creative aspect of it and and just really doing that has been just really amazing now angel what's, what's your passion my passion. I like problem solving. That's right. I, I honestly think that is, I grew up on video games too. And I used to like the logic style games where, you know, you had to make this decision and this decision, but you need to solve this problem. And based on the type of decision that you make in this, you get this particular outcome that has always interested me um, as a kid. And I, I love doing that now. So another, another piece of it happens to be the growth because, you know, whatever journey you are on it's your journey um remember it's it's not a sprint it's you know it's a marathon you want to enjoy the process and i will tell you i my career has been some ups and downs i you know i got out of school at a time when um things weren't ideal in the career industry um but i was open minded to take on other roles that still were close enough to get me to my goal and because of that, I think it made me a better person today. So today I happen to be, um, I am a leader within attractions and I lead um, a group of very talented tradespeople and, and, and computer technology and electricians and mechanics. And, you know, we're, we are part of the heart that makes sure that everything is safe and running each day um, so that anybody that comes to the amusement park, they know that they can ride their favorite ride that they want to ride. <laughs> and I think that all of my little bumps and, and the valleys and, and hurdles that I had to jump over made me better for the role that I'm in today. So that's why I appreciate those failures. All right. So part of part of this talk today is to let you guys know that um, STEM and STEAM and science and technology, that stuff is accessible to you right now. Right. So there are things you can do right now. There are things in your house that you can, you know, start using to, to help you learn with STEAM. So we kind of have an example of one of our videos that that we done. This is a super easy little, super easy um, uh, example that you can do at home. So I hope you like it. Let me, Andrew, let's go and present. This. All I'm right, going, this is homemade. I am so embarrassed. Dang. <laughs> 60 Second Steam Show. Let's make a robot clothespin. It's super easy. Here's what you need clothespin, mini vibrational motor, coin battery, and tape. If you want to decorate That's it, you familiar. can use markers and pipe cleaner. Just in case you want to make it look cool. Take your clothespin, decorate it. What? It's not cool enough? Okay, looking much better. Ew. Take your motor. There it is. Take your clothespin. Put it. Put the motor inside the mouth of the clothespin. Take some tape. Make a loop. 
Make sure the sticky part is on the outside. Take one of your motor wires, stick it onto the tape. Stick the battery on the tape. On the other wire, put some tape, put it on the battery. And let's see what happens. That. Now that is some Ooh. homemade steam right there. Get it. It's so cute. <laughs> that is, that is. <laughs> But I, I will say that um, in the Steam Squad show, we do have a YouTube channel where we talk about this. Um, we have a lot of things on there um, that range from small robotics to programming to electronics with Arduinos and things like that. So we don't just ha just have clothespin robots in there. We have some pretty cool things in there. So you, you might want to check it out. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff that we go through in the videos are translate, you know, translatable to today. So a lot of the work that we do on a regular basis are some of the stuff that you can do even with these projects that will still apply. So it's kind of like getting practice before you actually do the work um, in the career field. Now, Angel, I do want to add one more thing on there because we do talk about, I mean, one of your favorite things, which is problem solving. So even if you're not interested in engineering specifically, just learning how to problem solve and how to solve problems. I mean, we have that in there as well. So I just wanted to make sure we, we talk about that a little bit as well. <laughs> and as always, before you try any of these projects, make sure you stay safe. And if you are not an adult, right, make sure you get the parents permission before you get started. Make sure you wear your safety glasses. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, figuring out your career path is like putting a puzzle together. Um, so, Lee, what, what, are, what are some puzzle pieces you wish you knew before that you now know? You know, especially when we're talking about the amusement park industry, which is a big industry. That's the thing we, we need to talk about. It's, it's a lot. There's a lot going on. The, one thing I, I, I remember is, you're not like if you want to build a ride, like a roller coaster or like a really cool, like dark ride or something like that. It's not just one person that builds that. Right. Or it comes up with the idea or, you know, you, you know, anything. It's not one person. So when you're thinking about like building attractions and stuff like that, you can't be everything. Right. So that's why when we talked about early, what is your passion? So one of the things that I always try to tell people, especially when they're like, oh, I have this cool ride idea or whatever. I would ask somebody, what would you like to do? for eight hours a day for oh, five or six or more <laughs> for five days a week or six days a week or you know what i'm saying or, or whatever what would you like to do like for me i would love to be on um computer-aided design cad you know i would like to be doing something like that or um, 3d modeling or like some you know things like that that's that's my passion you know, so that would be the, the area of amusement park industry I would like to be in. Angel, what would you like to do if you were, if you, eight hours, you have to do it all day. Eight hours. I, I found out early on, I like leading. Yes. I love being in the industry. I love the problem solving, but I, I like trying to get diverse minds together to help problem solve. Um, and you know, luckily I was able to find a, a career that allows me to do both where it's a little bit of the project side, but then it's also leading, you know, teams as well, which is pretty cool. So something else too, that I wish I knew um, that I know now is sometimes, and you got to be patient, especially for the college students. So I'm speaking to the college students and actually for high school students too. Sometimes your advisors may not have all the answers for you. Mm -hmm. And it is okay because these are your dreams that you're trying to chase. And the example I will give you is when I was younger, I wanted to get into the special effects industry. I didn't really know what that was. And guess what? There's no major for special effects. And when I told my advisor um, that I am going to do an internship um, at an amusement park, they looked at me and said, well, people in engineering don't go to amusement parks. And I said, no, I, I think I saw it on a video. I think they do. And they said, you're going to serve hot dogs. That's what's going to happen when you get out there. And I will be honest with you. I was not to say serving hot dogs is a bad thing for those out there serving hot dogs. But I was nervous because this was supposed to be my big internship um, while I was pursuing my mechanical engineering degree. And I got out there and then I found out, oh my gosh, there is like a huge world of industry engineering professionals 
um, that work for the amusement parks. I mean, you know, we're talking about, you know, complex systems that move, that people are riding in. Of course, there's going to be engineers and technologists and computer programmers and architects and, you know, everything that you could imagine. So if anything, there is no, there isn't a direct path, but just understand that everybody may not have the answer that you're looking for. And that's why you got to ask a lot of people and do your research um, so that you can find out what you want to do and get closer to your goal. I love it. And guess what? Um, my first job was making hot dogs in an amusement park though. <laughs> I told you it's cool. I told you it's cool. I, I never served a hot dog, but you know what? I value that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So we have a few things too that we want, you know, some takeaways um, before we get to the question and answers. Uh, you know, things to remember. So Lee, you want to take the first one? Well, the, I think the important thing is to know your worth. I mean, the, the thing is, uh, especially wherever you work, it doesn't matter. Um, know that the things that you're doing, everything that you're learning, all of those things are important, right? So you can't be like, well, I just made this locking system or whatever. If that locking system is something that saves people's lives, you're responsible for saving millions of lives, right? So think, so don't think about the things in the small sp uh, space. Think of it in the bigger space. And then also just make sure that you know your worth right don't expect other people to tell you you know who you are so you need to know your place right you need to know how important you are and, and i mean this is not even just the amusement park industry this is in life right just don't let other people define your worth you should know your own worth okay another one um as well as failure. Oh, can talk failure again. Failure is only opportunity on the verge of success. That's right. So, you know, for every closed door that you may encounter, eventually you're going to come into a door that, that opens up for you. Um, so you got to keep pushing, you got to keep trying, and you got to make sure that you keep the right people around you that keep motivating you to keep going, no matter whatever you're pursuing. Let's see what the next one is. Oh, love, uh, love what you do. I mean, it's really important to know that um, we really are, we're talking about passion. We're talking about jobs that that you enjoy and your purpose and things like that. So it's also important to know like why you're doing it and things like that. Because let's be let's be real. We're going to be real for a second. There's going to be times when you're not going to like what you do. All right. I what? Mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, especially like, let's I mean, let's talk about the amusement park industry. When, when you're talking about a roller coaster or a dark ride or something like that, they usually take about three or four years to build. I am mm -hmm. pretty sure that in those three or four years, you're not going to like it all the time. Right. So it's important to just be uh, you have to stop for a second and think about the bigger picture. Your purpose is to build this roller coaster and think about, OK, people are going to enjoy it. People, are, you know, so during those difficult times when things maybe not be working properly and things like that, just remember why you're doing this and, and that'll keep you motivated as, as you're moving forward. Perfect. Perfect. All right. And then last but not least, um, you know, there's going to be a few times that you throw out, you know, some ideas. Um, every time you hear a no, don't think of it as something negative. Think of it as the next opportunity that's coming your way. Um, because you you never know, because of course, with amusement parks, it is collaboration. We mentioned that before. Um, there isn't just one person that builds a ride. There are thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that have to participate to make something like a ride become a reality. Um, so if you get your first no, whether it's a job interview or maybe it was an ideal or approach to problem solving, it's not the end of the world. There's still, it might be your next opportunity. So now this to me is the fun part because this is where we get to hear questions directly from you all because we want to make sure that we are answering anything above and beyond that gets you closer to your goal overall. So we're opening it up to any questions that anyone out there may have. Great. Thank you, Angel and Lee. Uh, we're going to uh, give people a second to form their questions. Remember, if you have a question for Angel and Lee, you can put it in the Q&A and we will get to those as they come in. Um, but while we are waiting for that, just a couple questions I wanted to ask you, um, just kind of get us warmed up. Um, so you both work in amusement park engineering. What was the first ride that really got you interested in this as a career field? 
Mm-hmm. Let me see. Well, actually, I can go, Angel. So my first roller coaster that I got on was called the Scooby Doo. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows about that cartoon, but it's um it was my first. It was like a baby roller coaster, and like soon as I got on this roller coaster, I was hooked. And then the cool thing was being able to see like later on, I was like, oh, somebody built this, somebody created this. I was like, is that a job? Is that a career? Can I do that? Right. So that led me to like going on to like building and stuff like that. And I was like, I want to build roller coasters for theme parks and stuff like that. So that was my first attraction. That was the first, first thing I ever got on. That's awesome. Okay. So my happened to be, um, of course, when I got a lot older, um, I, I used to work when I was in high school, it was like an amusement park inside um, a, a mall kind of area. And they used to have this simulation, um, which is very similar to like a Kuka arm nowadays where you get in this big pod and you have the screen in front of you and then you go on a roller coaster ride um, inside of it and it flip, you know, it doesn't really flip you, but it turns and spins around. And I was always interested in how it worked. Now, granted, at the time, um, I just pushed a button to make the ride go from time to time and I made sure people got in and out. But standing there watching it, I thought, man, this is really neat. It would be really cool to re- be a part of whoever or whomever creates this. Um, so that that really sparked the interest. Also, too, um, watching, you know, the behind the scenes of how movies are made and, you know, you see the special effects in superhero movies and you see, you know, of course we see it on screen, person flies through the air, but then you see that there's cables connected to them and, and, you know, different, um, different machinery to make the scenes that, you know, are impactful to us in the movies. Um, and moments like that also helped influence why I wanted to get into um, engineering. That's great. Um, another question that we have is, uh, so you talked a lot about your path, um, your educational path. After graduating college, which class did you find was the most useful for your current career? What what class did you take that you feel like you are using the most knowledge from um, in your daily careers? I would say for me, the, mo- the most fun class that I had um, happened to be in manufacturing principles. Um, because we had the, it was such a mixture of items. So we got to do, you know, CNC programming. Um, we also uh, got to weld. And then we also learned about different materials and hardnesses. And I enjoyed the mixture of lesson plans within the manufacturing class um, that to this day, um, I still remember um, and still apply. Absolutely. And I will say another one too. Um, I took a PLC programming um, class as well for robotics and it's, you know, it's ladder logic. And it's interesting that even when we troubleshoot some of the rides that we have, the same principles will still apply in, you know, how you have to get, you know, one connection to the next before you get to the end result um, that can be applied in, in many applications. So those, those are my two big ones. What about you, Lee? Mm, I would think so. I'm probably going to make it difficult. You're going to probably need to know all of it. So here's the reason why is because when you're talking about the amusement park industry, it's not like NASA or like working for a car company where you're working on one thing and it's the only thing that you're building. Right. So if you're working in NASA, you're probably building a spaceship or a satellite or you're building a car or something like that. In the amusement park, in the amusement park industry, you might be working on a boat one day. You might be working on a roller coaster the next day. You might be working on a train. So all of those things, you know, have different parts of the discipline that you'll need to understand. I know it's, it's specifically in my my area. I've, I remember there was one class called Strength and Materials. It was the, um, one of the classes that it, you, every, every mechanical engineer has to take it. And I was like, oh, you know, oh, this is such a, oh, it's getting on my nerves. I don't. And so, so my first project, I had to learn, I mean, it was strength and materials. And, but I will say this in my world now, I, I do a lot of programming. So I use a lot of um, what I learned in my C class and things like that. So that is what has been really helpful like recently. But I'm gonna tell you, you know, I've used, I feel like I've used at least a little bit, at least a piece of something in every class. So I would not look at, class like oh this is stupid i would look at every class like how does this relate to maybe the coolest attraction that i've ever had and maybe that'll help you 
maybe try and do better in class, you know, things like that. So, um, and that yeah. is true. So the other piece of it, just to add on to that, um, you will be surprised the classes that you may not be able to make the connection of, will I ever use this one day? Yes. In most cases, just like Lee said, you will end up using it. So make sure you keep those books too, especially for the college students. Don't sell your books back. I'm one of those. I sold some books and then I had to rebuy them again later on in life. Um, but keep those books because you'll be surprised. You'll end up using them again. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Uh, here's a fun one. Do you ever go on your own rides? What, and you know, if you do, what, what is that experience like for you? No, I'm too scared. <laughs> i'm just kidding no i i i get i mean every every project that i've worked on i'm like uh, i have to you know get on, and i enjoy it every single time i mean i don't know about you angel i mean how you feel yeah no i i think that's one of the benefits of working in the amusement park industry you actually get to enjoy the work that you do because you you not only do you get to see other people enjoy it but then you get to go out there and enjoy it as well. And then you can take family members out there to enjoy it. And then you'll get family members you didn't know you had try to come out there to visit you to also ride your <laughs> rides too. Um, but it, I think that's one of the one of the main benefits because it's hard work. You're going to have hard days, but you get on it and then you realize, okay, wait, this, this is worth this definitely is worth it because look at how many smiles are out there. Um, and then you also get the smile about it too. You know, the other cool thing, and I know um, Angel, you can relate to this. We've had many times when we go to, you know, there's nothing like you look out in the land, like there's nothing out there. And then maybe two or three years later, the attraction that you worked on is there and you can say i was there when there was nothing there just right? dirt just <laughs> dirt right and then all of a sudden there's this attraction there you can be like i was there when there was nothing so i just think that's just a cool thing to to <laughs> reflect off of <laughs> definitely so uh kind of related we do have a question if you're willing to share what are some of the rides that you have worked on Ooh, so <laughs> Without me giving the names, I I have worked in galaxies far, far away. I have been to distant moons. Um, I have worked on entertainment shows um, that featured stunts. Um, I have also I worked in the construction industry for a little bit. I've I've worked on lobbies. Um, I've worked on poles. I worked on speaker systems um, that most people don't realize when when they're out there in the amusement parks and they hear audio in the background you know while they're enjoying food or just walking through um, but I've had projects in construction before putting in those audio systems that kind of create the ambiance for the environment um, but um, I, I will say I, I've had the opportunity to work on some really really cool things. I've worked on a lot of dinosaurs so a lot of dinosaurs. And, and, you know, this is an interesting thing to talk about, you know, because one of the things that you don't know about working in the music park industry is that um, you can't always talk about the projects that you're working on, which is so frustrating, right? Because if I'm working on like a new attraction or something like that, like for three or four years, I can't talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, that will mess up the, the surprise. If I have this really cool surprise at the end of the ride, I can't tell y'all about it because, you know, then it would spoil the surprise. So that's the interesting thing about when you work in the industry is that sometimes you're not able to like talk about like, hey, I did this, this, and this, and this, and part of the attraction. You just have to kind of like be kind of like a superhero, like, hey, <laughs> you know, you're enjoying it, but I, but you know why, you know, I know why, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> It's like you have a really special secret. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. very cool. cool. Um, okay, so, you know, as a community college, we have students that transfer all over the country. Um, and we had a question about, are there any colleges or universities in particular that are known for the amusement industry going to for recruitment? Like, are there any colleges that, you know, the amusement park industry just, they know these are great programs that we like to recruit from? I, I would say um, not necessarily. But, you know, there, there's programs, there's internship programs that are out there. And, you know, the internship programs are open to, you know, any accredited college that, that exists. And as long as you are towards the end of your, um, towards the end of your school career, so your junior, senior year, and that you meet the proper GPA requirements, um, you, you get those opportunities to get into an internship, uh, which strongly suggests 
because internship is one of the best ways for you to be able to figure out, do you really want to do what you think you want to do? Because I will tell you, I originally thought, okay, I'm going to school. I'm going to be a mechanical engineer. And I thought, oh, I'm going to sit behind a computer and do SolidWorks and CAD all day. And I'm going to love it. Guess what? I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Um, I am more of a people person and I wanted to be out in the field. I wanted to do projects. I wanted to talk to other people and get, you know, great minds to collaborate. And that's, you know, it wasn't until I, I did my internship and I did some contractor work that I realized and, you know, I helped define what I really, really wanted to do. Um, so I wouldn't say it's necessarily one school or an area, um, um, but definitely look for internships and, you know, in amusement park areas that you are interested in. And I'll, and I'll just add to that is as far as like one of the things you want to do is just kind of hone in on what part of the amusement park industry you want to work in because, okay, so we focused a lot on engineering because both of us are engineers, but I mean, if you're interested in art or, you know, the creative aspects of things, you know, going to a accredited art school and things like that and developing a, a strong portfolio, because that's how you're going to be um, discovered in the amusement park industry. It, it, it you know, the school may give you a little bit of leeway, but it really is going to be your portfolio that you show to them that of your work and the things that you've already done. Right. And it's, and we, I mean, we've talked about engineering. So just making sure that you hone in on what part of the engineering do you want to work on? Do you want to work on the mechanical parts of it? Do you want to work on the electrical parts of it, you know, and things like that. So um, as long as you do that, that's going to get you, um, that'll give you a, a better chance of getting into those industries. And just to, you know, reiterate about the internship program, so most of the major theme parks, if you look up the theme park and type in internship as your search, they all have in, um, internship programs. Please, 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 please sign up, you know, put your resume in there. They, they will not, they're not going to look for you. You need to put your information out there. So it's just important that you make sure that you fill out that information. I mean, if you come to me and you're saying, hey, I want to do an internship, the first question I'm going to ask you is, did you put your resume in that in the program? Because I can't even look at you if you didn't do that. So that's the first thing you should do. So I'm hoping that like you're hearing what we're saying to you guys is make sure that you have your information in those in those spaces before um, you're talking to people in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. And especially it's so important to make sure you're really paying attention to the directions because so many of these types of um, processes, whether it's internships or applying for jobs they're you know, they go through kind of a, a bot first to make sure that it, you fit the requirements. And so if you're not following the directions to a T, you might get discarded without someone even seeing, and you might be an excellent candidate, but uh, so yeah, definitely make sure that, that you're doing that. Um, you kind of touched on this. The next question that we have um, when you're talking about, you know, um, an art background. So what percent of your job would you say is, is STEM and what percent is art? You want to go first, Angel? You want me? You go first. Okay. So mine is a little bit different because mine is on the creative side of work. So I would say mine is about 80% art now. <laughs> um, now, if you talked about, if you asked me about three or four years ago, it was probably about 90% engineering. So I've, uh, I've sh shifted to a um, different area of, of the amusement park industry. Uh, most of my work is on the creative side of the aspect, but there's also a respect um, for the engineering part. It's, it's always important to know that whether, even if you're working in the creative aspect, you know, coming up with cool ideas, always, you know, think about like, you know, the coolest ideas and things like that. But at, at some point you really do have to use physics and math and things like that to actually make it something that is real and tangible. So um, yeah, but to answer your question, probably most of mine is like 80, 90% in the creative aspect now. Yes. I, so I am the exact opposite. Mine is yeah. probably 95% of the STEM realm and the art side of it is just so that I align with the current arts and look and efforts that have already been put in place. So, you know, it's me being mindful of it when we're doing repairs or replacements or rehabs. Um, but most of it is definitely STEM. <laughs> Great. Um, so you talked about in your presentation at the beginning, you talked about how um, underrepresented women are and um, African-Americans and other minority populations are in STEM. 
Was there anything particular that really allowed you to persist in STEM? Was there something that was like instrumental in keeping you going in pursuing your program in a field that obviously um, it can be difficult to to continue um, on toward that degree? Having good mentors. Yes, I would say just having good mentors. And I mean, that's why it's really important. I'm, I'm so glad the angel said it. Just make sure you ask for help. You know, don't do it in a vacuum. Don't do it by yourself. I mean, uh, and you're, I, I, I'll just speak for myself. I know there have been times when I was like, why am I not getting this? Why am I not understanding this? And the reason why is because I wasn't asked for help, right? So um, I've, I've been very fortunate to have mentors that, you know, when I wasn't doing well, they had that real talk with me to say, okay, so here's what you need to do and get it together. You know, and I'm hoping that like for everybody that's interested in in whatever passion you are, I mean, again, this is not just about amusement parks and things like that. I hope that you will listen to those people. And and when you need help, it's okay to say, look, I need some help. I'm not understanding this, especially especially in engineering. There's some times when you just really don't understand it and you just need somebody to really tell you what what you need to do. Yeah, I, I will say same thing, mentors. Um, but of course, in, in some cases, you don't have a mentor, mm-hmm. um, but it's interesting the people who will show you or remind you of your talent and your worth, um, that they will see some kind of spark in you. And you know, so you got to keep your eyes open. You'll be surprised at how many fans you probably have out there that want to see you succeed, that they want to see you win. Um and for me, it was, you know, those, those small, my small fan base that always kept pushing me through, even though, granted, I, I didn't see too many people that looked like me. But at the same time, I had people rooting for me saying, you're doing something big, you're doing something different. And that's, you know, that's honorable. So, you know, keep, keep pushing through. Um, and, you know, one of my main goals for being where I am today is to kind of be that positive representation. Um, and another reason why we do the STEAM Squad show is, like we said, we're trying to give STEAM materials and robotic kits and lessons and give it access to areas and people that don't have access to it um, just to get it out there. Because I think people just aren't aware of how cool some of the stuff is that we do. Um, whether it's in robotics or it is in controls or programming. Great. And then uh, our last question that we have for you, and you kind of maybe just touched on this, but how can we follow you if we want to learn more or do more um, with Steam Squad? What's the best way to do that? Well, we have a YouTube channel. It's the Steam Squad Show. Um, feel free to follow us and subscribe. We we um, we update very regularly, trying to um, try and get as much information about how to build robots and programming. And sometimes we just have a little bit of fun, and, you know. So check us out on there. That'd be a great way to you know, you know learn a little bit about what we do and some of the efforts that we're doing, at least on our nonprofit side. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Angel and Lee, for being here with us today. And I hope that you all have a good rest of the evening. That's going to wrap up STEM week for us. And uh, we hope that we'll have you guys back again in the future. This was a lot of fun. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you, guys. It was awesome.